and all. I just want to do it. Oh, are we cozy tonight? People must be on vacation or something. Okay, verse 9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, that we would be strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience, long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father who hath made us able to be partakers of the inheritance, the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Do you agree? Amen. Amen. Well, now would you, would you guys like to start right into the book, or would you like to do a little bit on communion? Now, Sunday oh, we talked about yes. communion. That was a boatload full. Wow. Uh, can we see it again? How, how, we, long, how long was that one? Yeah, what we're going to do is then we're going to go to oh, the Scripture. Yes. We're going to go to Scripture. Okay. We're going to go to Scripture. But if you could possibly take notes. Take notes, okay? But, but what I'll share with you is in 2 Timothy, please write that down or go to it. 2 Timothy 2.15. Okay, I bless you in Jesus' name. See, we're to do the blessing, aren't we? We're supposed to bless our day. We're supposed to bless other people. We're bless, bless, bless. So, Second Timothy two two fifteen. We're supposed to rightly divide the word of God. So, with the praise and worship today, it is so full. This chapter two, it's just awesome. But it's really good to know what we're supposed to do. So, um, who has 2 Timothy 2.15 in the Amplified? I do. Go ahead, Stacy. She put her hand up first. Um, study and be eager and do your utmost to present yourself to God approved, tested by trial, a workman who has no cause to be ashamed, correctly analyzing and accurately dividing, rightly handing, and skillfully teaching the word of truth. Okay, so he is telling us that he wants us to discern between right and wrong. He wants us to, because right now in this world, there, there's, um, I had gotten something today that there are a, a lot of pastors that are going away from the Word of God. And they're going into um, uh, the world system of teaching the Word and, and staying in the pulpit with that. Um, and, and that isn't what we should do because this is the time when we really need the Word of God so we can discern, can't we? Yes. Now, we all heard about Epstein. Did, didn't we? Epstein? Epstein? Epstein, whatever, yeah. Okay, now we know we know that the cameras went off up there. What do you all know? I, I didn't, know that. didn't know that. No, I didn't know that. I just know that he killed himself. He's, he supposedly, that's why I did this, these are air quotes. Supposedly. They can't hear, air quotes. <laughs> so what, it, what, do you want to say a little bit about it, Kenny? Yeah. Well, I don't know, I don't know, I wasn't there, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the cameras was off, there was two, there was two guards to watch during that ship. The one guy was a substitute guard, and the other guy that was supposed to be watching the money Hung himself was sleeping. Hmm. Um, yeah. And the cameras so, were off. And, okay. How did you know the cameras were off? Did they say they that on that, the news? They, they've said that on the news. The cameras, that the were, cameras off. were off. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's Why that's was pretty sad. The cameras off and you turn them off. Yeah. <laughs> so, I I just want to say this that the devil is so bold to do something like that. And everybody knows it. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's gotten bolder and bolder and bolder. huh? And, I, and I'm, I'm going to share this here again because on Tuesday I was sharing this and um, when people say, what do you think about being a lesbian 
or a gay guy. What do you think about that? What would you say, Donna? Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah. That's all you really have to say. You know, because they can go to the Word and they can find out what the Word says on it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in reality, what does it really, really do? What, are, what is that person doing to God that say, it's okay, God made me that way, and they're Christians. What is it really saying? It's shaking your fist in God's face. And it's bringing God down to a lower level instead of us going up to his level. Yeah. So, I mean, shaking your fist at God, and that, that's with anything with the Word. When we start bringing the Word down to our level and make it human uh -huh. so that we can understand it, that isn't what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. It's calling evil good. Calling evil good and good evil, absolutely. So we need to discern, don't we? So we know that when we pray in the Spirit, that is going to help us to discern, isn't it? and also rightly dividing the Word of God and knowing what the Word says, right? Mm -hmm. Well, on, on, on Sunday, in um, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, we'll see how much we can get of this in. All right, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, and this is the New King James, okay? And it says, no temptation, has overtaken you except a wit. It's really important to, to look at these in the scripture. Okay, are we all there, 13, yes. Yes. 10, 13? Okay, yes. all right, now this is the New King James. No temptation has overtaken you except, except such as common to man, but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. So, now remember, what you are able. But with the temptation will also make, what is the next word say in yours? A way. The way of escape. The way, the way. what does your say? Mine says a way. A way? What? The, the way. The way. Dee Dee? I think she has the same one as... He will also make... The a way, way to make our way. A way of escape. Okay, that's supposed to say the. When you go back to the original, okay, Greek, it will say the way of escape so that you may be able to bear it. So there isn't anything that we as human beings would go through that we would not be able to bear. Now, when something comes up, when we know there is the way, not a way. The way, so that's specific, isn't it? Now, Jesus Christ is what? The same way. Yesterday, he, today oh, and forever. Yes, yes, and, and, and so the way of escape, he's telling us, I have given you a way of escape. That way of escape, okay, that means to get out of, to exit, out of that situation, and that is take communion. Now, it was very important when you rightly divide, right, divide the word and you see that here, what does he do at the Last Supper, at the Passover? It's passing from the Old Testament to the New. Mm -hmm. So that's passing. So what was so important to Jesus that he had to have the Last Supper with his disciples? And they sang, but they took communion. Why was that so important? Because it was the way to escape any problem. He said, this, now, when you, when you have a situation you don't know what to do with, you take communion and you put me in remembrance, put yourself in remembrance of everything that I did because I'm gonna go to the cross. Now, they didn't understand that, did they? Right. right. <clears throat> so, it's kind of crazy because when, when he died on the cross, they all flee. They flee. There was, you know, John was stayed there by Jesus, but there was a big exit, wasn't there? Mm -hmm. Why? Because their hearts, they, they didn't love Jesus. They loved what they saw. 
with their natural eyes. Because remember, they were big stuff because he was doing all these miracles and all these good things were happening. So that made them look good. Does that make sense? Yeah. It also looks to me like, you know, they fled because it looked like Jesus just kind of gave in and gave yep. up. And it's like, what is he doing? He's got this power. Why is he doing that? And it's like, that. I think yeah. it freaked him out. Now, they didn't listen to the words that he spoke, did they? No. He said, he said, okay, this temple, but three days it's going to be built back up again. Mm -hmm. And after all that they saw, they should have rightly divided that. They should have looked at that, right? So that's what we have to do when a temptation, when something comes at us, we have to know is the way of escape. The way is to take communion. All right? So you're rightly dividing the Word of God. So you, so you have to say, there is a way out, there's a way of escape, there's the door to escape. It means it's general, um, uh, not general, I'm sorry. I think it's not a general the thing. The way is a general Yes, but it's not, not a statement. It's statement, statement. Right. right? And you say the way it is definite. Yes, yes. exactly. There you go. It. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Thank you. It is definite. He says, "I am the way, the truth, and the life." Mm -hmm. So when he tells us this is the only way, just like he tells us this is the only way you can get to heaven, is through Jesus Christ. Now you will have some people over at Free and some of those will say, "There's other ways to get to heaven." No. But, but when, when, when you've got a name out there and you start to teach that, how many people are you taking down with you? That's why you've got to know the truth so that you're set free, but that you can answer people's questions when they come and they say to you, well, blah, 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 you know. You say, no, no, the way. The, the only way to get out of this sickness, to get out of this bad relationship, to get out of, you know, children hitting the wall, a bad marriage is the escape is what? Take communion. Does that make sense? Yep. So when I'm taking communion, all right, now does it say in the word in Second, in second Chronicles 20, it says, he said the, um, the, Lord, the battle is the Lord's. And, okay, <coughs> so then uh, we saw we saw that with Gideon, the battle is the Lord's. We saw it with Jehoshaphat, that the battle is the Lord's. It's not ours. Jesus Christ went and fought that battle and took care of the whole <coughs> thing. He took care of the whole thing before the foundation of the world. Now try to wrap your mind around that. That's a, that's a bit of a challenge, isn't it? But that's what he said because he went retroactive back and gave them in the Old Testament a way out to follow the law. Mm -hmm. And then each year there was a sacrifice, wasn't there? So he gives us a way of escape. He gave us that way of escape, right? Mm -hmm. So now when, when we look at, <coughs> when we look at a, a spiritual, and I'm just going to explain this, but I'm not going to get into it until Sunday or something like that, okay? When he says, um, eat my body and drink my blood, what he was really saying, okay, and like I said, due to time, he was saying, you know, when, when you come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, where are you seated? Are you in him and he's in you? Yes. Aha, uh -huh, there you go. So we are one with him. He was making that statement saying, you're going to be in me and I'm going to be in you. Okay, but when, when, when he says, eat, eat, remember I'll say different times the word is delicious. We feed our flesh food, is that right? Right. Do we feed our spirit man food? That's yeah. what he's getting, that's what he's getting, that's what he's getting. Knowing that we have a partnership, we partake together with him because of what he, did, what he has done for us. So when we take communion, we take the wafer or the bread, okay, we're remembering that that's our way out 
whatever situation is coming against us, right? Whatever situation is coming against us, that's our way out. So I'm taking communion, I'm gonna get a visual picture of what, what he did. What did he do? He took our sins on that cross, he took us into hell with him, he raised us up out of hell, right? Gotta get revelation on this here. And then he, he raised us up together with himself. So, so, as, so as he is, so are we. So how is Jesus? Is he healed? Yes. yes. Is everything perfect? Yes. yes. Has he given everything to us? Yes. yes. Okay. So as he is, so are we. So as he is, so are we. So that's when we take communion, we say, ah, his body was broken. So he's completely healed. Remember, he had to be broken so we could be healed. So we could be perfect. So now how is he? When he came back, they didn't even recognize him. Perfect. Perfect. So is he, so are we. So you, you look at your body, whatever's going on, and you say, um, so I'm just like him. I'm just like him. There's an intimate exchange that goes on. And see, when you get to know Jesus Christ, you want that relationship. You want that relationship because you know um, your parents, you know your husband. The, the best way to describe a relationship with Jesus Christ is through an intimacy with our husbands, okay? Or the men with their wives. Well, God wants that intimacy as David had with God. He sang, he sang, he, he laid his heart out. Even the only thing he never really laid his heart up with was sex, and that's what he got caught in. That was his little secret. Can I talk to God about anything? Absolutely, don't get in the thing like, I can't even say it. No. Talk to him about it, give it to him, but once you give it to him, he's got it, you don't have it anymore. It is finished, it's finished. And then you're gonna praise and worship God, do you think so? So, um, I'll give you this here one, John 6, 53. It says, and I'll, you don't have to go there. It says, then Jesus said to them, most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. That's intimacy. The two became one. We became one with Jesus Christ, right? So there is no eternal life apart from Jesus. We have to personally partake of him the same way we eat food to, to sustain our physical. Isn't that, isn't that cool? That, so that, that's just the way he rolls. And, but do we have that in our hearts? That's, I've got so many notes here, and these are my personal notes too. Um, let me see. He says in John 14, 20, At that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He was explaining communion. He was saying, he was telling them that I am in you, and you're in me. We are one, right? But when he says about eating, all right, he, he took all the sin, all the sickness, and he went into hell. That's pretty hard to wrap your mind around, but that's what he did, all right? He ate all the evil. He took it all onto him and in him, all right? Um, is this some of this making sense to you? I'm right, just... Just kind of running around the boat here. Um, in, in John 6, 66, write that down. After this, many of his disciples drew back, returned to their old, own, their old associations and no longer accompanied him. Wow. 
but they came back. And that was John 666. And I read that from the Amplified, okay? So now when you look at <coughs> we're supposed to enter into his rest, are we? Mm -hmm. yes. And so is Jesus, so are we. We know now that when after he went before the Father and he sent the Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. Is that when everything went, that they were born again, the whole nine yards, they got the praying in the Spirit? Mm -hmm. Now, when you ask Jesus Christ into your heart, you have a partnership, you partake, okay? You're eating spiritually. What else is spiritually? The Word. You have to eat the Word of God by speaking the Word of God so it gets down into you. So he's using that to explain that to us, okay? Mm -hmm. Eating, it's a part of you. I'm a part of you, and you're a part of me. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, just so we don't get off, you know, the beaten path. Um, let me see, I wanted to share one more, but I don't know where I put it right now. So he says there's no temptation. No temptation that nothing that he hasn't already supplied for us. Nothing. Everything is supplied for us. The only thing we have to do is take it. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. All right. So now, when you take communion, all right, and we'll do that at the end, or we can do it right now if they want to bring communion in. Maybe. We should maybe just take it now to get up. And I'll go to 1 John. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. 1 John 4.17. Listen to this. This is the Amplified. Thank you. Knowing that this is the way out, not a way out. The way out. 1 John 4, 17, the Amplified Bible. In this union, communion with him, love is brought to completion yep. and attains perfection with us, that we may have confidence for the day of judgment with assurance and boldness to face him, because as he is, so are we in this world. So. That's exactly what he is. He, he's, when they came out, they couldn't even recognize him because his body didn't look like the body that went in the tomb. It was completely restored. And he said, there, now I was beat up, you know, look at the mess I was. That was you. Now this is you. Now this is you. So now we're intimate. The more you know him, the more intimacy, intimate you are with him. And that's why you would praise and worship him after you take communion or before whenever you want. So that's just a little synopsis and we're going, we'll go on more like that. So now, let's, let's take the communion. Okay, now, when you're doing this here, remember, when you break that bread, when you break that bread, his body was broken. And just think about that, that lashes on him. Every lash, do you have pain someplace? Um, um, I don't care if it's a headache. I don't care if stomach ache. You know what I'm saying? I don't care what it is, no matter how foul the disease is or anything. What do you do with that? You remember that Jesus Christ didn't have that. He had it. He took it into hell. When he rose up, he doesn't have that anymore. And we are just like him in this world. Right? Okay. So, the father, uh, cancer. No, no, I don't receive it. I'm just like you. I'm healed. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. Okay, what is going on? What is going on physically? Okay, what is going on with relationships? What is going on with your children, with your marriage? So you can take this time and go through those things. All right? Mm -hmm. And as you go through those things, you'll say, Jesus, what did he do? Brought rest, peace, love, joy, the whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. So it's finished. Mm -hmm. So now what do we need? 
He said, this is the time to take communion, right? Mm -hmm. And this is the only way of escape mm -hmm. because he's already escaped. He's taken it into hell. He escaped out of hell. Here we are. Okay, so what, whatever is going on, whatever, all right? I don't care if it's with your car. I don't care if it's with your finances. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. So you'll get used of doing this, and let's say you take communion, and all of a sudden, two minutes later, you go, oh, take it again. Take it again, because it'll get less and less and less, and you'll be able to just hit things like you didn't before. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So whatever is going on, because we as Christians really don't need other people, other Christians to lay hands on us. The laying on of hands is really for non-Christians. Uh -huh. okay. You know? So, like I said, God hasn't had me lay hands on people for a long time. And I was like, Lord, you want me to lay hands? No, he said. If they're a non-Christian, you can lay hands on them. That makes sense, doesn't it? Yes. Because they're supposed to be mature enough to take communion. If they're not, then you can lay hands on them. But they're mature, they'll say, wait a minute, this is my way, the way of escape. I'm going to take communion, and I'm going to see the lashes that took away whatever that is in my body or on my body. I don't care if it's a rash. I don't care, I don't care if it's losing hair. I, do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't care. Just say, no. When he came out of that tomb, he had all of his hair back. Remember, they had pulled him out and the beard out. That was a mess to look at. He had it all back. We've got it all. Amen. Right? Yes. Right? And, and so this is the way of escape for everything, every disease, every sickness, poverty, uh, marriage problems, house problems, job problems, this is it. All right? Mm -hmm. And then you thank, thank the Father. Wait a minute. You, you don't have stomach aches. Huh. And what does it say? We are just like Him. I don't have it. And the more you do it, all of a sudden it'll click, it'll click, it'll click, it'll click. And it'll just come naturally. But see, when you're listening and discerning, when you're listening and discerning, you're going to get things like that. Otherwise, from one day to the next, you'll go and you'll say, why is everything getting so hard? Why is this and why is that? Every time, I don't care how small the situation is, take communion. If you don't have communion by you, see yourself the partaking. Lord, uh, you didn't have that. Well, so are we in this world, just like you. You didn't have, you don't have any problems now. No, just like you. Okay? I can't find something. Well, Lord, you, you, you know where everything is. I'm just like you. See what you're doing? So this is a teaching to get understanding. With all you're getting, get understanding. Any questions? Any questions there? No? Clear as mud? Okay. Then let's eat. Now, now that was for disease and sickness and problems. Now again, what is this for? Righteousness. This is for our righteousness. This redeemed us from the curse. This takes care of everything spiritual, everything evil. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, we know, so is he, so are we. Right? He redeemed us from the curse. He just, he's the only one that could justify us. The law could not justify us. So now we can say, by the stripes of Jesus I'm healed? Absolutely. You can curse any evil thing, anything that's evil. Is there a sickness? Sickness is evil. Curse it. Curse it. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Curse what isn't right. 
we're supposed to be doing it. And then you bind, I bind you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Whatever is bound in heaven is bound up. Whatever you bind in heaven, whatever you bind, God says that's us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So now when we take communion, we are remembering that he made us spiritually equal to himself. <gasps> wow. He made us spiritually equal with himself. Isn't that a little, mm -hmm. doesn't that just... So when something is wrong and we're, we're going someplace or we see something or in our home, why don't we speak what we want and not the way it is? Romans 4, 17, call those things that are not as though they were. Call them, that's your job. That makes sense, isn't it? Yes. Don't, don't, go, don't complain about it, just call it the way you want it. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So now, are we the righteousness of God? Yes. We're in, in his union, communion with him. We're communing with him. It's an intimate relationship. We have a special relationship, and we know who he is. We know what he has, and we're just like him. And in Psalms 82, he said that. Mm -hmm. He said, you're little Elohims, you're little gods. Right? Yeah. yeah. Wow. And then he says, just call out what you want. If it's wrong, make it right. That's why you need to rightly divide the word to know what the word says so that you work the word. Amen. That makes sense, doesn't it? Yes. So now when we take this here, if you say, I'm the righteousness of God, I curse that cancer, it's cursed. Amen. Whatever it is, okay? Yes. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Let's eat. So again, we know that sickness, sickness is a, is a foul spirit. It's an evil spirit that has come on. Some people bring it on themselves, and sometimes it just hits you right between the eyes. Do we know that? Mm -hmm. if, I kept on, if I kept on drinking the way I was drinking and smoking, and then, like I just heard about somebody who has emphysema, is that right? And they've got the, the oxygen, they, uh, and they're still smoking. <laughs> You're not supposed to smoke. I think my aunt Betty was like that. What? My aunt Betty was like that. Still? Be on, no, she's gone. But she um, she would be on oxygen, and then she'd turn it off to smoke a cigarette. <laughs> my stepdad was the same way. It makes no sense. But my aunt Vivian was the same way. And she would come over, or we would be around her, my sisters and I, and family, and she'd be going... Lighten it up. And, yeah. Now you girls don't ever do this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and it. <laughs> well, I'm serious. She would say that, and I'm like, we're all we're all looking at her like, why would we want to? <laughs> now, now, when you think about that, uh -huh. what little things do we have? Wow. Well, that. That's kind of ob That's an obvious thing, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Right. That. That is really. Um, but again, what is it doing? And, and if they're a Christian, wow. It's again saying, I know better than you, God. Isn't that what it's doing? I know better than you, God. So again, and then how are you going to edify yourself? And how are you going to build yourself up when you need help? Because you want to eat, you want to do something you're not supposed to do, or, or you know what I'm saying. Pray in the Spirit. Right, pray in the Spirit. Start putting a pray song on. Speak out the Word. Yes, yes. Because God has given us rules um, to follow. But are we following the rules? No. So we're bringing things on. But thank God He's given us the way of escape. It makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, any questions on that? Anything to add? Okay, so so we're good. When so the battle is the Lord's, right? Yeah. And when He's battling, what are we feeding on? The Word. We're feeding on the Word. We're feeding our spirit man. Hmm? We're feed. Yeah, that's what we're supposed to do. Okay. Do we want to get into this? Are you ready? Mm -hmm. All right. We'll at least get a few pages in here. Okay. 
Oh, I, I love this because how could Paul praise? Pastor Kenny, you want to start on? Chapter two. Chapter two. I apologize. Yeah. Chapter two. Oh, on page. Yeah. Okay. Seventeen. Oh. Chapter two. Yeah. Taking a serious look at Paul's life, some of the apostles' lives, even some of this country's early ministers and missionaries, it's easy to wonder how they could possibly continue to offer praise and worship to God in the midst of their suffering. However, looking further, we see how Paul viewed all the suffering he went through. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body and the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 10. <clears throat> Our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, work it for us a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. But we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Now we know that, of course, don't we? Yes. Second Corinthians 4, 17 and 18. Amen. <clears throat> Notice Paul said our light afflictions. This is an amazing statement. Sometimes we skip over this and don't really understand the background of what Paul is saying. If we look at 2 Corinthians 11, Paul mentions what his light afflictions were. For ye suffer if a, if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors and more abundant in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent and deaths often. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes save one. Twice was I beaten with rods, once out of stone twice. I suffered a shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys often to the perils of water and the perils of robbers, and the perils by my own countrymen, the perils by heat, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watching often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in a cold and nakedness. Second Corinthians 11, 20 and 23 to 27. Can you only imagine this? <clears throat> and he calls it a light affliction. Well, you know why. Okay, we'll go on and find out. Go ahead, Pastor Kenny. Paul had been true to Rainer. He even <laughs> said that he had suffered more than anyone, yet he considered it a light affliction. He wasn't saying it was a light affliction because he didn't have as many problems as you and I do. Paul probably suffered more than you and I have ever thought about suffering, but it was just light affliction for him because of his perspective. Did you get that? His his what was his perspective? It was a light affliction. A light affliction. But what was he looking at? He was looking at the spirit realm. This life is just a short time. But right now, what we're going through is just a short time, a blinking of the eye, according to eternity. Isn't that awesome? Okay, Kenny, go on. I hear so many people say, I would praise God if I didn't have so many problems. And then they began enumerating all of their problems. In effect, they're saying, yes, I agree with praise, and I would praise God if it were easier. But it's just too hard with all the problems I'm facing. Paul had it worse than anyone yet. He said it was just a light affliction, and praise God in the midst of everything. Now, Paul had more problems and more adversity than any of us could praise God then no one is justified in not praising God because of your problems. Now, we get that. Now, you do have that, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the, the short span that he was on this earth, he said, this is a light affliction because I can see eternity. I can see heaven. I can see where I'm going to be forever. 
That's what we got to look at instead of looking at poor little us. I do that sometimes, guys. I'm so guilty sometimes. I just don't like it. But when you get your eyes off of that and you get it on where you're going to heaven and forever, it's going to be gorgeous, wonderful. You're going to be with him. You're not going to, you don't have to cook. You don't have to clean. <laughs> you don't have to wear different clothes. Just you just, <laughs> <laughs> all, you know what I mean? Just, I mean, here, you're doing the laundry. You're cooking a meal. You're going shopping. Do you ever get to the point, yes, I don't want to do this anymore. We don't have to do that in heaven. But this is just a short time. Right? That's what Paul was looking. That's why he said it was what? What did he say it was? Light. 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 He said, where I'm going is worth it all. Nobody has suffered the way he suffered but Jesus Christ. And he was on the other side of the cross, so he knew how Jesus suffered, didn't he? Mm -hmm. He knew exactly how it was going to be. Right? Mm -hmm. Any Anything to add in that? No? Okay. Who wants to read a little bit? The choice is ours. Okay. Go ahead. Satan has deceived the body of Christ. He has devised elaborate systems of justifying people's lack of praise. Psychology has also had a big impact on our society today, and not all of it is good. Primarily, it has taken blame and responsibility away from us. We aren't responsible for our actions. It's another person's fault. It's our parents and the way they did or did not treat us. It's society, the color of our skin, if we had more money, if we had this or that. We blame our sin or bad habits on everyone and everything else. Yet Paul, who had terrible adversity, came against him, come against him. Um, never blamed anyone else. He took responsibility for his emotions and he chose to praise God. Given our present day situations, we have the choice of how we are going to respond. Society can't make us respond a particular way. Our circumstances can't make us behave, have behavioral problems. It's our choice. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. well, you, how, many, how many people have, have you ever did this in the past, blame other people or other things because... Yeah. Who did that in the very first book of the Bible? Cain. Who? Cain. Cain. Oh, oh, Adam. Yeah. Adam. Oh, yeah. He, God. Cain was second. It yeah. is yeah. that woman you yeah. gave yeah. me. That's true. And, and that's where it entered in. Yeah. And don't we still do that today? Mm-hmm. You know? When, okay, sure. Three kids running Kenny Jr. back to school summer and winter. Sometimes I'd say, oh, God, these kids you gave me. Mm -hmm. um, I had to do something to get them. Mm -hmm. That was not his choice. That was my choice. You get it? Mm -hmm. I never heard my mom say that with nine and you had ten. You're, you know, it's our choice. Sometimes you're thinking, oh, you know. But, but you go, praise God. Praise God. Because if one of them left you would never say anything like that again. They're too precious. That's right. Right? Right. Amen. Well, <laughs> you have a little one waiting in heaven for you. Amen. One or two? One. One. <laughs> two. Me? I have four. Four. They're waiting in heaven. I know. And, and you know what? When you look at that, you think, that is awesome. That is awesome. And then you don't feel bad anymore because you know they're perfect and they're not going through anything that you're going through. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So it's our choice, our behavioral problems. So when God created us, he gave us the ability to do what? Choose. You can choose this day what you're going to do. Really, you can choose to get married, choose not to marry, choose to have children, choose to go to church, choose not. It's our free will, isn't it? Yep. <clears throat> Choice. But can we blame other people for our no. circle? No. We can't. I can't blame Kenny for anything. No. We can try. Excuse me? We can try. <laughs> we can try, but it doesn't feel good, it doesn't does it? Pay, pay off at all. Just Do as we, we have the, <laughs> just as we have the ability to choose eternal life or death, we have the ability to choose to praise God in what? All situations. All situations. Go ahead, read from there, Stacy. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. 
Deuteronomy 30. Yep. Okay. Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. God gave us the choice. He doesn't make the choice for us and he cannot force us into any decision. It's our choice. The choice isn't difficult. It's either life or death, blessing or cursing. This should be a no-brainer, but just in case someone might be having trouble with the choice, God gives a hint. He says, choose life. <gasps> it's like a test with choices, A, life, or B, death, that God puts in parentheses that A in the answer. Think about that. Think <laughs> okay. about that. You know what? You know what? Just think of this. If we said, oh, God, these kids you gave me. Um, do you think we could set ourselves up to losing? we got to watch what we say. When we're born-again Christians, right? You better, better believe it. Okay. Debbie, you want to read that? My dad died. My dad died when I was only 12 years old. I went through the teenage years, the most critical time of my life, without a father. Psychologists would gladly tell you all the problems I should have. My dad was always sick. He would come home from work and need to rest. He didn't go on camping trips. He never threw a baseball with me. We never played football. We never did any of the things that kids are supposed to do with their fathers. And I still loved him dearly. I had a good relationship with him and I have nothing but good memories of him. When he died, I missed him, but I understood that he, that he wasn't there. I wasn't bitter toward him. I've never, I've met women who have lost their husbands either through divorce or through death, and they are just panic-stricken about their children. They have to have a father. They are willing to marry the first guy that walk, who walked down the street just so that their children won't be fatherless. Now, how many times have you heard heard that? Oh, often. Yeah, and, and what happens sometimes to the children from that new father? They get abused. Abused. That's horrible. Mm -hmm. And vice versa. Mm -hmm. Because I had an aunt that she abused um, um, his children. He had two children, and she abused him. It wasn't just fathers that do it. Women do it too, but it was his children and she married and hers was top crop. No, it was three children. No, two. And she abused him. You know, it just, she was a mean old son of a gun. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. But the, you know, that love, I, I can't figure out that out, how you can not love a child. You know, I just can't figure that out. I can't wrap, because as many kids went through our house, and, and Dee Dee knows it, there's a lot of them that went through that I just couldn't help but love him. Now, is that right to say it that way? I just loved him, no matter what their quirks were. And some of them weren't the best. But I loved him. Because they're God's human beings. Okay, go on and read that. That's an example of this mentality that says, we just can't prosper if we're in this adversity. The only way we're going to succeed is if we can change our situations and get to the place where we have no more problems. <laughs> but that's not true. I grew up in a situation that most people would have said was desperate, but I can honestly say I can't recall facing a single problem that I couldn't overcome, growing up those, through those teenage years without my father. Some people do become bitter and resentful toward parents who are no longer with them. Not every teenager has fond memories of that missing parent. Some kids have a two-parent home, but the father is so involved in his business that he is never home to participate in those children's lives. But we have a choice to make. We can choose to respond in God's light, in light of God's word, and be better. Or we can choose to respond according to our flesh and be bitter. We can either be bitter or better or bitter. It's our choice. Now, now, just think of that. Like, like when we got married, you know, Kenny, he, he worked for Ron Miller, and they worked some long hours, even on Saturday. Okay, so I basically had to raise the kids, and you heard him, and I say that already. Did it kill him? Did it kill me? Why today do some women complain because their husbands aren't there with their kids? I see somebody's got to do it. Just do it. You know, get her done. Okay, 
Paul, the ultimate um, desire. Pastor Kenny, you want to read that? For I am in a strait between two ham and desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more than needful for you. For you. Philippians 1, 23 and 24. Paul recognized the benefit of going to be with the Lord. That was his ultimate desire. Isn't that awesome? You know, really every one of us are probably there. But no, Lord, I got stuff to do here yet. But I'd sure love to be with you. Did you ever do that? Maybe when you were younger you didn't. You know, now it's like, I mean, oh, you know, I'm here to stay for a while. You know what I'm saying? Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> But I also knew there was more work for him to do on this earth and to further the gospel. So I hesitated, or regretfully, he said, I guess I'll stay here with you so I can benefit you. That's a man whose perspective was right. That's a man who operated in praise. Amen. So what's our situations today? If we are struggling in the area of healing, we need to get our minds off our negative circumstances and begin to praise God and think about God's healing. Even if we don't receive a manifestation of healing in this life, the worst that could happen is that we would die and go to be with the Lord. He has so much more laid up for us that we should have the attitude Paul did, where we can say, I have a desire to depart and to be with the Lord. I want to know Jesus and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings. Philippians 3.10 Paul understood that he wasn't really the one being persecuted, it was Jesus. Jesus told Paul that when he was converted on the road to Damascus, the Lord appeared to him and said, So why are you persecuting me? Acts 9, 3 and 5. Saul had not physically persecuted Jesus, but he was persecuting him, persecuting the followers of Jesus. Jesus put it into first person and said, You are persecuting me. I believe thought, Paul thought on these things. He remembered his conversion experience and realized he wasn't being persecuted. Jesus was. Jesus was suffering through Paul and he began to praise God. It was his decision of his will based upon the things he was thinking about. If he would have thought about his problem, his pain, his discomfort, how unjust the Romans were and what they were doing to him, he would have been discouraged, but instead he chose to operate in praise. What do you think about that? He kept his mind stayed on Christ. He kept his mind stayed on Christ. And the man praised and worshipped. <clears throat> and when you praise and worship, you, and did he pray in tongues? Mm -hmm. What does praying in tongues do? I love so if you get sad, can you make yourself happy? Yeah. Yes. By how? Praying in the Spirit or singing a song. I mean, oh, you can have fun, think about something. I was thinking about the little kids jumping, and I got that picture of little Matt and Gunner jumping in the pool. And they look like a little duck. Did you ever see that um, 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 on Facebook or something? This mama duck is coming, and she jumps in the water. And then a little duck jumps, and a little duck. And it looks like these little ducks jumping in the water. On her, and I got that in my mind, and I got that on my phone in a picture. You look at those things, and you start praising God when you see simple things like that. Mm -hmm. You know? Isn't that fun? Mm -hmm. Let's be from fun country and have some fun. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't have fun. You know what happened to me? Look what happened to Paul. Look what happened to Paul. So. So what do you do? Zip up, you know, that little smiley face on your phones? Zip. Isn't that the truth? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I get a little cantankerous, and I complain. Yeah, then I have to knock it off. Then I have to apologize. Boy, I don't like to do that. Okay, overcoming a pressure cooker. Who would like to read that? I'll read it. Go ahead. Paul chose to respond to his pressures in a positive way. We cannot justify being negative, depressed, or discouraged by our circumstances. I admit these responses are a temptation, they are a pressure, but ultimately we make the choice. If the pressure on the inside of us is greater than the pressure that is on the outside of us, we won't crumble, regardless of what happens. 
Praise is one of those things that builds up spiritual pressure on the inside. Praise puts our attention on God and releases the strength of the Lord inside us. Did you get that? What is it? Read that just once more. Praise, Praise puts our attention on God and releases the strength of the Lord inside us. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, you can make yourself happy. Yeah. All the time. Yes, underline it, circle it, do what needs to get her done. I thought I had a yellow one. So, praise puts our attention on God and releases the strength of the Lord inside of us. Why, why wouldn't we put on praise and worship in our home? When the kids are around and teach them how to do it. You know what, it'll bring order in the house. It'll bring order in the house. I know it does ours, did and does. Go on, Judy. If the joy of the Lord is our strength, when we operate in praise and choose to glorify God, strength will flow in us. Ooh, isn't that just a little? Just read that whole paragraph. Over. Praise, <laughs> praise is one of those things. Start right there. I just can't okay. help myself. Praise is one of those things that builds up spiritual pressure on the inside. Praise puts our attention on God and releases the strength of the Lord inside us. If the joy of the Lord is our strength, when we operate in praise and choose to glorify God, strength will flow in us. Do you know how many gifts you get from God for this? Oh. Just by being, because this is what he commands us. He'll just give you overload. <laughs> wow, you just can't help yourself, can you? All of a sudden you say, why is everything so good? And if it's bad, start praising and worshiping. Sing a hallelujah. Okay, go on, Judy. I remember a science experiment my class did when I was in the sixth grade. We took an empty one-gallon metal gas can, put it, in, put it on a burner, and heated it until the can got very hot. Now when air is heated, it expands. So the air expanded inside that gas can, and while it was still hot, we put the cap on it to make it airtight. We then let the can cool down. As it cooled, the air inside the can began to compress, and a partial vacuum formed. We watched that can just crumble. The atmospheric pressure of our classroom crushed the can because the pressure outside was greater than the pressure inside. That experiment made a big impression on me. It illustrates what I'm saying about having a spiritual pressure built up inside of us so it is stronger than the outside pressures of life we face every day. Praise builds that spiritual pressure. Praise releases the strength of the Lord inside of us. Everyone experiences pressure. Paul went through more pressures than what any of us claim to go through, yet he said it's just a light affliction. He didn't say this because he didn't have any problems or outside pressures trying to crumple him, but the pressure he had on the inside was greater. Paul had the right perspective, and that's what praise will do for us. Praise will keep us built up on the inside. It will keep our minds stayed on God. The Lord will keep us in perfect peace. It doesn't matter what pressures are coming against us. Praise can keep us from crumpling and from being crushed under those pressures. What do you think about this? That's good. Yeah. Does, don't you just want to do it then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, did you ever see somebody who's just kind of ugly all the time? Just the, their smile goes down instead of up? Yeah. You, do, do you want to be in their presence? No. 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 I don't want to be one of them. Um, little Matthew says to me, you're always happy. I said, I am. I'm going to go to heaven when I leave this earth. What is his response to that? Uh, okay. <laughs> so he was just, I thought that was really cute. You're always happy. How, how do they see us? How do they see us? Are we just always happy or are we grumpy or... 
right? Mm-hmm. Be from Fun City, right? Mm-hmm. We can handle that. <laughs> You're around Keegan, you'll get from Fun City. <laughs> you'll get there. <laughs> well, let's go that far. Let's go that far, right there. Okay. So we'll go to page 23, um, Paul's two weapons, because otherwise we'll just rush through it. Now, what we want to do, uh, um, testimonies. Who wants to start testimonies? I have one. Go ahead. Um, so last weekend, Brian and I took a little road trip, and before we left, we didn't make any plans for the night. We weren't sure exactly where we were going to be, so we didn't make any plans. Yeah. How about before? What? No, but before we left, I said, Lord, you know, it would really be nice. I know you give me the desires of my heart, so it would really be nice if we found a place where I could go for a bike ride, and Brian could go fishing if he wanted, and everything would be provided. Um, and I thought, you know, that's a pretty big order. Um, <laughs> nothing is impossible for God. So um, we didn't talk about where we were going to stay or anything, um, but we went to the first location that we wanted to go to, and before we got there, um, there was a resort sign. And actually, I think there were two, but both of us kind of zoned in on the one, and Brian said, should we just go to that resort and see if they have any openings for the night? Well, it's not a hotel, but, <laughs> but we both agreed, sure, let's do it, why not? So um, I went up to the office and she said, well, you know, we do have one cabin open for tonight. Mm. And, um, and I said, and how much would that be? And she quoted me a price, and I'm like, well, I, I think that's pretty good for a cabin. So we decided to take it, and um, they gave us a, a brochure, among other things. And in the brochure, it told you the real price for the night, which was double what oh. she quoted us. Uh-huh. So the price that we paid was a one-person price. Really, for two people, we should have paid double that. And then I would have said, we're not staying here. Yes. But, yes, she knew. (laughs) Two people, I said two people. And it was a resort, and they had 100 bikes that anyone could use. 100. 100. Sweet. Yep. All the, anything you would need for fishing. Um, They had kayaks, and paddle boards, and... Um, whatever else. If you needed firewood, you just had to go up to the wood house and get firewood. And you could even take a golf cart that they have on the grounds and go get your firewood and bring it back. And so um, it was like an all-inclusive type of resort. Yeah. So it was very nice. Yeah. Oh my God. That. Uh, it, so you spoke what you wanted. Will you ever say, well, Lord, that's too much no. again? No. <laughs> did you she, probably did, she probably just thought that, right? I, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's and why you have to do it. He knows your thoughts. The yeah. devil doesn't. Right. But he knows how you're acting. You know, if I go like this, the devil sure knows I can poke her. <laughs> you know, if you're always smiling, he's like, what's going on with her? We'll poke her a little. Hallelujah. Ha, you, you understand? Okay, who's next? I saw a yellow swallowtail in my patio today. Hello, do you know what they look like at all? They're beautiful. A yellow swallow? It's a bird. A yellow swallowtail. Of some oh, sort. butterfly. A butterfly. A butterfly. Did you take pictures for Ziva? Sorry, but you know, I don't always have my phone in my back pocket, but yeah. So that was really a sweet treat and blessing. Oh. I love seeing wildlife. Different wildlife in my sure. area. Sure. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Fun. Okay. That oh. was my little testimony, really. I just thought it was a sweet blessing because th- they're rare. You don't mm-hmm. see yellow swallowtails around too wow. much. It was passing through. Just passing through probably came to my house. Oh, well, I, I had three mon- monarchs. Little monarchs on my yeah, flowers in I the have front. Monarchs too. Which yeah. I didn't see before other years. Oh no, no. we got we well, had a dragonfly. Well, anyway, yeah. Debbie, 
Nothing's coming to my mind. Okay, we'll wait. Anybody else? So Monday I got a text from a farmer friend who used to sell jewelry with me. Yeah. Oh. Um, she lives in Kiwani. She actually lost over 100 baby cows this past winter. Oh. But um, oh. Oh. she lost 100 baby cows. Oh. Yeah. So the day after that one fire in Menominee or whatever, her barn went on fire. Oh, 130 cows. She had about 130 that died. In a Anyways, fire. Yeah. Oh. Somehow her yeah. barn got on fire. But that's not reason why she texted me. <laughs> no, Anyways, sure I know her through Premier, so she's a Premier sister. Neither one of us sell anymore. But she invited me to a farm to fork gala on Saturday the 24th. And um, so I text him asking, you know, is there anything we have going on? He's like, no. So she sends me the information today after I tell her, yeah, we'll go. Oh. So the information, and I just I forwarded it to Tim without telling him all of the scoop. It's $125 per person oh, for what? this gala. Farm yeah. a gala? Farm a to farm fork. To fork. Oh, farm gala. to fork. Oh, those are, yeah. yeah. So yeah. there's like a tour and a social hour. You get um, wine and dine. Yeah, I don't know. And then a dinner with um, prime rib and seasonal side by the executive chef, chef from Black and Tan. Sure. Um, so it's $125 per person. And Tim's like, her person, are you serious? Like, do, why, <laughs> do you still want to go? And this is the part I didn't tell him. She got the table sponsored, so it's free. Oh! oh! Woo! Fifty dollar awesome. dinner for nothing, and he's like, "Do we have to dress up?" I'm like, "Dude, it's a gala." <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, one hundred twenty five dollars for plate. Yes, you're dressing do you, up. Do you notice how we have tigers okay. rights going on? Tell Tim we'll, we'll sand those more shorts. No, yeah. no, no camouflage shirts. <laughs> yeah. Goodness, let's dress to the nine like we own it. Oh, <laughs> that'll be so so. Fun. I'm excited for next Saturday. That'll oh, be so that is awesome. Cool. That's cool. awesome. awesome. I pray for perfect weather for Me you too. in yes. Jesus' name. Okay. Donna, anything? The only thing I can think of was last, the weekend before Sam went on vacation, he was over. And he wanted to play the game, shut the box. It's a dice game where you get the numbers and you have to close all the numbers to see who wins first. And we played a couple rounds and both times we were down to the last number and he kept saying negative things. And I said, you have to say what you want. And he kept going with the negative and I just said, I'm going to win this time. And I shook the dice, and I won both times. Oh. And, I said, and that was Sam? Every time I <coughs> say what happens, I get what I want, so you have to say your words. You, you, do you guys, are you all realizing how important your words are? Yes. yes. It really works. Dee, yeah. you must have some good stuff. You were, you were gone to North Dakota, South Dakota? South Dakota. South Dakota to Sturgis? To biking, did you use a slingshot? What did you use? No, I drove the car. <laughs> I thought <laughs> sure, just, <laughs> you don't you like the motorcycle. You rode the motorcycle. No, you drove the car. I don't ever do that. I shot. Oh, okay. Well, give us some testimonies. Give shot. us some testimonies. <laughs> um, I, I went in to give a guy a ride to the airport, and he started talking to me. Um, about he lost his son. And then he started talking about the Lord and how he oh. just went to the Lord and just said he was empty because he lost his son. And he, him and his wife felt like their life was empty. And he had been watching some race show on a television set. He said the TV wasn't even on. And all of a sudden, the next thing you know, that Dr. Stanley, do you ever see, he's an older Charles gentleman. Stanley. Charles, Charles Stanley. Stanley. Oh, yeah. He said, did he? Came up on the screen. He goes, "I am not kidding you. I never knew the guy. I never had any association with him. I really wasn't involved with church, and he was there. Oh. And he started talking about feeling empty in life and why things go. Because he was associated. I'm a good person. My wife's a good person. We do a lot of good things for people. Why did this happen to us? And then he said, it another time, he was going through some stuff, and he said, D, I was delivering these hospital parts." I was up in the mountains, so I didn't get no cell phone range, but I seen this bright light and I just started crying really hard. I didn't know why, and I'm not a guy who cries. <laughs> but he had been asking the Lord because he wanted his daughter saved. 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 And she was refusing it. 
after he lost his son, and him and his wife had come. They had gotten saved. Oh. So he knew how important it was for his daughter to be saved, but she was fighting it. Yeah. He came down from the mountain from delivering these parts, and he said his pastor called and said, I just wanted to say, God does always answer your prayers. And he goes, what are you talking about? He goes, then you don't know. He said, Dee Dee, at that exact time, when I seen that bright light and I just started sobbing for no reason, my daughter asked Jesus. Yes, that is so awesome. So he told me, you know, so I was just like, I, I, you know, I've known Jeff for like three years and he, we always have very nice conversations and everything, but I only see him at Sturgis. Yeah. You know, I, he's with a group of people, so I really never have a personal conversation with him and his oh. wife, Angel. You know, I just don't. And just taking him to the airport that day, all of a sudden, he just started telling me this stuff. That's, that's an awesome testimony. Mm -hmm. And I just told him, and, I, and, he, and then he said something about his son, and I said, don't you ever question where your son is. And he looked at me. I, I don't know why he said it to him. He never said he questioned him, but I think mm -hmm. I, it just, for some reason, I was led to say it. I said, because we never can ever question it because we don't know the conversation they had with God. Amen. And his face just looked at me and he goes, how did you know I questioned that? <laughs> I said, that's what the Holy Spirit does. So his son is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that was, that was, I thought that was just like awesome. I had that, just randomly had that conversation. To be a part of that, awesome. Mm -hmm. Pastor Kenny? Well, this isn't, this, this isn't really my testimony, but I'll give this anyway. Um, yeah, I, um, I'm good friends with Lowell Bennett yeah. and Lowell Races. Mm -hmm. And so we was, at, we was having a new car built for this year's racing season. Ah. So a new frame, new everything. Mike Anderson, who builds cars, is top notch in the, yep, in the business. He went to school with Mike. Okay. And, uh, does he work for, with Lowell? What's that? Mike, does he work with Lowell? No. Okay, never mind. He so, built a car, though. He built. Okay, gotcha. So anyway, um, mm -hmm. there was a new motor being built for the car, for the new car. Halfway through building the motor, the guy died. Mike died? No, no. The guy that was building the motor. Oh, okay. I don't build the motor. So oh, okay. He does, okay. He does the freight. So, he, the guy died, so didn't have a motor for the new car. So, Lowell had to use the Slinger oh. car, which is a different type car than what you use your race out here. Oh. Yeah, that's what he had to use out here. So, it was like 100, 150 pounds heavier than any car out there. So we were slow. <laughs> you know, at first do good, but eventually everybody just go by it. So finally got somebody else to finish the motor and got the motor in and first you know, when you first take it out you got bugs in it work out, so you didn't do very well the first week out but the second week out was last week. Doing real well. He's fighting for second place. And a guy runs them into the wall. <laughs> so, okay, you start, you get pushed back, you gotta go back in the <clears throat> pad, and works his way back up. The guy takes him into the wall on the other side, so twice. So he was he was really discouraged, you know, the new car and everything. Yeah. And getting taken in the wall. Well anyway, somebody um, asked him, asked Lowell to drive his car. His, his Schrader's car at okay. 141 Speedway. So Lois, he loves racing, so yeah, I'll drive your car. He won the race <laughs> with his <laughs> car. So, so yeah, he's been struggling all year, so it made him feel pretty oh, good to win the race. Oh, that's good. I'm glad to hear so. that. Now, do they still race that Kakana thing over here on yeah, Thursday night? There's three weeks left. On Thursdays. Yeah, I, don't, I haven't really been hearing it. Yep. It was last night. Huh? Yeah, Did they, you hear the cars? Yeah, they were practicing. I, I don't know why he's going on tonight. But yeah, there was the cars over there. Over there. Tonight, I just race. haven't been really hearing him on one night. I am not hearing him now. That was me running around. You got to hear, you know what it is, Pat? You 
you got to know that sound. You oh. you know it. You know it. Okay. Here, don't you? Well. And don't you believe that? Mm -hmm. I can hear that sound and mean it. We never raise guys. Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. you, I can hear it from my house faintly. Not it was a butterfly yeah. making huh? that noise. Yes, you guys. <laughs> You remember Cody Shepherd that yep. come here with the young kids? Yeah. <clears throat> he races out there. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Yeah, he does. And Lowell's helped him out, gave him tires and stuff. Oh. And, and, but um, he's he's got a lot to learn. <laughs> first first of all, how to build a car. Oh. <laughs> so he ran the what they call the sizzling fours, which is a four cylinder car. Oh. <laughs> they don't, can't they don't go too fast. Cylinder? He oh, ran that for us and Cody should know he that. did. It was just a, it was a wreck going around the track. Oh. <laughs> he, he usually, he usually didn't finish a race. <laughs> this, this year he moved up one oh. spot and he's doing fairly well. He hasn't won anything, but he's finishing races. <laughs> I, when I see better. him, when I see him, I said, well, you finally learned how to turn left. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, I have a quick little testimony. I was sharing a little bit with Pastor Jan. Um, Noah, my grandson, um, has been taking archery classes. He's been wanting to do that for a couple of years. And Amy realized that he wasn't really giving up on it, so she signed him up to take them this summer. And he's been doing it for a couple of weeks now, and I just said, no, I am going to get out there today. I'm going to see, because they always ask me, Nana, when are you going to come, blah, blah, blah. So I made the effort. I went to school. I got some good stuff there to give to him. And I went over there. Oh, now I have an excuse to go over there. And then I hang out and I, and I said, no, can I go and see you do your archery class? <gasps> yes. And so I went and we watched. And it's about an hour. And I like how they do it because they blow their whistle. There's one whistle or two or three. They all mean something different. And I just love how it's just very organized. But anyway. He did a bullseye today. It was the first bullseye. Amy and Amy was dealing with this little girl next to her, so she didn't videotape it. She felt so bad because she's videotaping everything everywhere. But um, anyway, I said, I am so glad I got to witness your first bullseye. And he was so excited about it. And he really likes archery. So Amy said, Alex is going to build something at home so he can practice because I know he'll like yeah, so that was a thrill for me. They're throwing. Yeah, they are growing. Friday is his ninth birthday. He's going to turn nine. Mm -hmm. oh. Debbie, have you got a testimony? Well, um, Debbie Schomer and I went up to Wapaka today. Oh, you we did? We got some really sweet clearance deals today. Some what? Clearance deals. Yes. Oh, really yeah. sweet clearance deals. Yeah. Sweet. Yes, we had some fun. Good. So fun. I was just blessed with that. Good. Well, yesterday, this is my testimony, I had gotten a person saved and praying in the Spirit, and I told this person that yesterday, and they said, you're an answer to our prayer. Several of us have been praying, and you're an answer to our prayer. I said, well, look at that. See how it, it gets done? God is so good. He, and to know that you're an answer to the prayer yeah. only because you were obedient and you listened and you got her done, Oh, I love it. I love it. Anybody else? Oh, Lynn, do you have a testimony? Sure. We sure. don't want to forget you. Well, and if the, ushers, if the usher or security have a testimony, they can come in. I live on an alley. Our driveway is on an alley, and we're the last house, so I'm like five houses in. And we used to live next to someone who was able to bring in gravel and grave when the potholes come every single oh. spring and summer. Well, they moved out at least five years ago. And while he was there, we never had to pay. So I thought they were just doing it, but we've never had to pay. Even after he's gone out, nobody has ever asked us for money to contribute to that, so. Wow, you can handle that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, you live in Appleton? Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay, well that's not too far away, is it? No. No. Okay, well this is our opportunity, I think this is mine. All right, this is our opportunity to give unto the Lord. What, um, what do I mean by that? Remember, when you give yourself, He's the one that multiplies and gives back to you. 
Amen. And that's why you praise and worship him in everything. Yeah. If it's bad, you praise and worship to take you out of it. Right? Jesus. God is good. All, All the time. time. Father, I thank you for increase yes. in every area of our lives, Father God. In the name of Jesus. Satan, I bind you from coming up against our flesh, but coming coming up against our finances, our marriages, our children, and our children's children. In Jesus' name. Do you agree? Amen. Amen. I bless each one of you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Ladies, tomorrow morning, 930. Right and early. Anybody, anybody oh, you know what? I didn't. Good. We're going to have her get that.